All right. So today is the due date for the Witch's Hovel uh, concept submissions. So I'm going to go through them all. Please make sure that you posted them. Um, so the point of this challenge was to encourage you guys to learn how to draw just through content, not through staple brush, stamp brushes, not through textures, not through anything painterly, not without depending on a really cool light effect. Just entirely um, just pulling anatomy, architectural anatomy, natural an anatomy, organic anatomy right out of your heads and, uh, and then applying them on the paper. The reason why this challenge was so important, and I'm going to keep trying to push this kind of challenge as much as I can, is because when we start painting, and yeah, we know how to shade the cube, and we know how to put light on a cube, and we know how to cast shadows, but we don't know what to draw. That what, that's the anatomy of the, co the composition. That's the, you know, what's in the drawing. Um, so that's really what I, what I wanted to stress as much as possible with this challenge. So some of you just passed with flying colors, you guys really know how to fill a canvas up. So it's not just a jumble of random scratches and cross hatching over here. What we see is a nice separated um, object beside a nice other separated object. So we, we know where the rocks are, we know where the mushrooms are, we know where the pebbles are, we know where the structure is, we know where the leaves are and where the trees are. But sometimes I find when I'm painting personally, I have no idea what to do. I have no uh, idea what to draw. So I'm going to be looking over some of these. Some of you were supposed to choose the find. I'm not going to be able to go through every single one, but some of you were supposed to choose a um, uh, one of these, one of the three thumbnails that you were supposed to work on in 16 by 9. And the reason why I say 16 by 9 is because it's cinema friendly, it's composition friendly, it's usually the, the kind of horizontal um, canvas you're always going to work with when you're doing landscapes. Uh, and it's, we're still in the landscape um, environment slash environment topic, so um, so yeah, this this whole this whole challenge here was supposed to get you ready for a workplace environment that requires you to to to, to design something for them. So imagine you're working for World of Warcraft or Riot. Or, or, or some other game that requires a lot of heavy concept game, all fantasy, weapons are fantasy, land is fantasy, um, the, the, the geography is fantasy, the, um, the, the physics are fantasy, you know, everything is, is, is on a whole other realm, a whole other world, nothing pulls from this one as much or, or, or that much. So when we, when we have that kind of challenging uh, concept uh, expected of us, when we do these kinds of challenges on our off days, those kinds of challenges won't sneak up on us and, and challenge us that much. We will be able to give them exactly what they want, so really different, innovative, and creative ways of doing the same old rehashed concept, but in reintroducing it entirely. Um, you'll find this, this, this is the job for the concept artist, to be able to conceptualize and draw and put together something that we would never have imagined. Not even a writer could have imagined it. So right here, I'm seeing all this kind of imagination just, just you know, it's like, it's like the, that phrase, that quote that says people thrive in, in, in restrictions or restrictions cause or, or lead to innovations. And really when you guys are get constriction, like when you guys are given restrictions, you guys really just blossom. So let's start with the first couple ones that were submitted. This one here is one of my favorites. This is by Sarah Chris. Just take a look at how she included the tree to be part and uh, of the house, just coming out of the house. I love that. And I love how the roof was kind of caved in. So let me read really, really quickly what the witch's hovel was all about for you guys. So, critique you, monthly themes, um, witch's hovel. Okay, so the witch's hovel... As defined, hovel is a small, squalid, unpleasant, or simply constructed dwelling. I was mostly focused on simply constructed dwelling. Uh, the witch lives in the outskirts of the city, deep in the forest. Her home is overgrown with branches, leaves, grass, and other foliage of the forest, as if the trees of that forest moved almost alive, twisted, and tangled. Her house is surrounded by charms and relics hanging from high branches or rooted deep into the ground. Small stones are set in odd shapes around the forest floor, warding off passerbys and protecting her tiny dwelling from other enchanters. So you don't really get evil off of this. More of like, like a good witch or a neutral witch, doesn't really matter. 
um, possibly a healer witch. So imagine this is something that you were hired for for a game level or some sort of boss level or something like that. Um, how would you design this entire environment? What would you tell the modelers to do? How would you work within the restriction of the writers? That's really what these challenges are for. So that's where it started from. Uh, a couple, the, the rest is all really just about how to submit it. Um, but this right here, I love this so much. This one here really, really just popped out. I like this one, but the whole house and a tree thing is nice. Um, but I, I, I did want you guys to find other ways around that. So the core references came from here. Some random pictures I sent you. So just imagine that your art director gave you these uh, these pieces right here. So take a look at that. This is really what I wanted you guys to take a look at. This was probably one of the warding relics around her house. And it's just a bust. But it's part of the, you know, just it's like a bunch of random cubes and, and weird uh, um, building blocks. But in them it's just this random little uh, face. And I thought that was so awesome and so charming. And I would love to have seen that. In your uh, in your in your images, this is part of that uh, part of the trees, but interwoven in the trees as if she's camouflaged in the trees. And mostly, instead of straight trees, I would have loved to see tangled trees just working within her house, and as if she used magic to help uh, stabilize her home. This is another example of that same theme. Here is the house in the tree, but it's a little bit more modernized. So I think this is photo manipulation. I'm not sure if this is even real, uh, but I think it's really cool how she still has that kind of Victorian architecture or that, uh, I'm not sure what it's called, Renaissance architecture, that that that, uh, that style of window, but, uh, but it's just embedded into the forest, still surrounded by that overgrown romantic look. And here's just an example of how to cause, make, possibly make the house feel like it's in a shambles or, or it's, a, it's squalid. Here's something I, I used for my concepts, and it's just, um, instead of it being a, a, a you know, brick house or traditional house, could just be a little hot. I forgot what these are called. Some more examples. This is possibly like a combination of something that could inspire you towards what kind of relics to use. Maybe pieces of blocks or something like that. Or maybe she lives in them. I know someone used this reference directly and in, kind of embedded her house in here. Which is a really, really cool idea as well as this being the arc into her home. And this is some more examples of the kind of environments. So this is tropical. And this is um, not, not like a, I'm not sure what the opposite of tropical is. <laughs> Normal. <laughs> Another example, maybe raised from the ground. And then some more references. So these were all used to just give you a head start. Follow the patterns of foliage. Try to work within those restrictions. Try to work with that um, inspiration. So what was it like? I really want to ask some of you. What was it like? Some of you, this is their first time ever drawing a tree or drawing a rock, which is really unfortunate. So what was, it, what was it like for you guys, those who participated? Was it very challenging? I'm sure the first one was very, very challenging for you guys. But it'll get way easier and easier. I know the first time I drew a tree was uh, a long time ago, and it looked nothing like a tree. I had no idea how to make the bark. So what happened was I just started throwing random textures. But really what I wanted to do is I didn't want you guys to throw random textures around. So this is an example of that. I wanted you to try to go in and draw every part of the tree. Well, this is one example of her dwelling that I kind of just had a stab at. Is that, what, is that what you say? A stab at it? And I wanted to create that tangled, messed up feeling in the, re in the relics and just a really, really messed up home. Um, and here is an example of something I'm a little bit more structured and intimidating. Um, and there are like relics into the in, in the trees and this is just one part of her, you know, one part of her environment. But I never got to finish it because that's not my homework. <laughs> it's your homework. Um, but try to go in. I tried to have this as an example for you guys because I want you to go in and try every, to draw every piece of the bark, every little piece of the anatomy of the architecture, every little rock that you're going to need later on to paint or the modeler might need. So let's take a look at some of these. This is a nice other example. I love this one, how it feels like it's pulsing, how it feels like it's full of magic. I love that. It looks like a big heart. This is something that really struck my eye. This one was nice as well, how like all the trees started to grow out of it, or she found one tree and it started to thrive because of the magic she used in there. I also like the crow. I don't like, however, the different size changes. So one big critique I have for all of you, I'll choose some to critique later on in the, uh, I think this is going to go on for the next two hours. Um, this is just me introducing some of the ones I like. Uh, but uh, one big critique is when you do pencil concepts of any kind, you just saw my stream, I was painting, I was drawing some personal stuff. 
the concept, pen, the, the pencil you use for the concept should never change. Never change the size of your pencil. Write that back to me. When you start bringing in variations in pencil size, you start bringing in, uh, you start, it's going to be hard for you to choose how are you going to decide which one gets the thick pencil and which one gets the thin pencil. If you're going to put the thick pencil on the outlines, I'm sure that would be your answer. I'll use the thick pencil on the outlines and the thin pencil on the insides of the lines. No, absolutely not. Because at this point you're saying that you are contesting the two together. They're both competing. The thick line is going to compete with the thin line and the thin line is going to also cause, uh, it's going to look busy. That's the biggest word here. The word I can use here is the concepts are great, but it looks busy. Um, I need to keep my eye on my mic because my mic is broken, by the way. Another one is coming in, but I, if I might, if I cut out, just give me a second, and I'll and I'll be able to detect it. But um, yeah, never change the pencil size, the outline, the insides of the lines, any other detail should all be the same pencil size. Don't worry about focus. The focus is going to be the area where you have the most lines. So right here is the focus. The focus is going to be areas where you compress and, 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 and cause like a traffic in detail. Um, it should not, my eyes are constantly going to the edges of this object. When we draw, when we have a drawing and we're creating, we're trying to create volume. So let's use this guy. The line is no, long, lo, no longer important. The line and line art is irrelevant. Please write that back to me. The line and line art should be, should be as out of the way as possible. Please write that back to me. Why is that significant? Why is that important? This whole practice really just perfects your line art. But people think that line art, when they say line art, it's like the antithesis of itself. When you say line art, you think line art, the line is what you're supposed to be focused on the most. No, you get it out of the way. What you focus on is the volume of the object. So let's say that you have this... Uh, drawing right here. Let's say you have a cube. The line here is a replacement for the edge, right? When we replace this edge with a line, this line should not come in with, with, with you know, full force and full power and gusto, or if that's even a word. Um, it should be as out of the way as possible because it is a, a, a shadow of the potential that it, uh, the edge that it could be. The potential edge that it could be is the maximum is its final form. It's is its final form of form. <laughs> um, so uh, when we use this line, what we're doing is just using it as an indicator. A line is an arrow. That's it. Every line, imagine just arrows pointing and lined up all across the line, pointing to the volume that they're encasing. A line encases volume. When we go in with all these crazy different line sizes and line variations and and you know it's just gonna look like a messy half painted half assed kind of mess we're not trying to put too much busyness in this volume area we're trying to point to the empty space so line art is about balancing negative and positive space please that write that back to me so a lot of you this was your first time having to do something with line art let alone a concept let alone a concept with restrictions and let alone a concept with references you have to use and you have to submit it and you have to do three of them all of that out of the way this was this was a challenge for your line art can you really draw with one brush consistently without having to depend on messy, messy, whatever, like suggestive texture, but really going in there and creating the texture as it happens. So going in there and drawing every little piece of bark uh, and, and every little twist in the t surface texture of objects. So I could go here and then just keep, keep detailing his hood to make it feel like it's some sort of felt or old cotton. But just adding those little pieces here made it feel like well, felty cotton or some old cotton material that's warm, that's used to keep him warm and keep his head warm while he's blind or whatever. I don't know what the fuck the concept was all about. But um, when I drew this, I was so scared. I was really conscious of using too much line. Um, and this dude here, I used too much line. I had to go in there and erase a lot away because the point isn't the line. The line is not the point of the painting. The point of the painting is the volume the lines are pointing to. Alright, that's the point of a line. The fact that it's a pointer and it encases volume. I repeated it. I'm going to keep repeating it throughout the rest of the, the session if you guys don't like me repeating myself. Um, yeah. Alright. So let's take a look at some people. 
some other concepts. So it's it's really the challenge here when you are submitting something like this to an art director in a studio, you're going to be challenged uh, or are you, a lot of stuff is going to be expected of you. Of course, texture and technique, that all has to do with keeping your line the same size. Then there's concept and a rational concept, a concept that actually feels like it can work. So a concept that feels, uh, you know, possible. So here's an example of that inconsistent line use. These lines right here, these are the lines that I keep under my lines. These are the lines that get me started. So if I can show you real quick the thing I worked on today, and, and just show you what the lines were under it. It was just a big mess. It was just a big fucking mess. And it's supposed to be because you get the mess out of the way early so that your lines stay clean later. But it's a mess and it's supposed to be a mess. But remember, that's your first stage. It's always supposed to be your first stage is a mess. Um, but these were the thumbnails, so I hope I see one that's cleaner um, as I go up. I did invite some of you to do traditional. When we're doing a concept, uh, please make sure that you're not using extreme perspectives for a concept. If the, if the game is going to be in an extreme perspective, okay, go ahead and use an extreme bird's eye or worm's eye perspective. But in a concept, in concept art, if you're supposed to be drawing something that is seen either front view or a little bit top down, a little bit, you know, uh, from, from, from a worm's eye, please paint it head on. Draw concepts head on. All right, that just means eye level. Please write that back to me. Draw concepts eye level. All right, this means that, again, you're going to be sending it to another uh, stage of production and they're going to be able to read the information there. You're not going to hide the information in an extreme perspective. This right here is really cool. It looks like a big wooden barrel and it kind of looks like the, um, you know, from Pirates of the Caribbean, the witch. This this kind of looks like her, her hovel as well. Pirates of the Caribbean, the Calypso character, she was also exactly like that. Her out, you know, there were candles on the outside and weird little gadgets and whatnot. So here, I don't think the concept was very powerful because the point is to make it look overgrown and broken down. Those are the two words, really. Overgrown and broken down. So the more overgrown and broken down it looks, but still keep, still livable, the more character it has. So there is a, a lot of character in asymmetry. Please write that back to me as well. Or write it down. You don't have to write it back to me, but there is a there is a lot of character in asymmetry. Doing a symmetrical architecture isn't always going to help you. Uh, isn't always going to help get the message across. So I was looking for that. When something is broken down, something is a little asymmetrical. This is why Sarah Chris's piece really just spoke to me. I loved it because it was so asymmetrical. It was all messed up and broken down, but it still looked like someone might live in there. And she had these little totems there. I hope you chose this one. Uh, for your uh, for your for your final piece, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I wasn't following every single person's submission that closely. So no extreme perspective. I'm going to be asking you guys to write back all of the things, all the major notes back to me. So whoever does, um, okay, whoever writes back the notes for me, I'll give them my brush set for free. Okay, whoever writes back all the notes very very nicely in a nice long list. Uh, at the end of class, I will give you my brush set for free. All right? I mean, that's not that much, but, you know. <clears throat> that's incentive for you guys to make some notes. All right, let's take a look at these. The brush the brush size has been really consistent throughout. I'm happy you didn't depend on random crisscrossy, messy hatching to get the to get the feeling of texture. I really like this, but I imagined, you know, if I made it too high and there were ladders, I imagined her being an old woman. That's why I didn't go for anything too high in the sky or too high in the trees. Um, that's why, because she felt like she was an old lady, so how would she get up there every time? She'd be more happy with like an underground hovel, but it's still, uh, this here, right here, I love the totem. I like how it's overgrown. Um, it, it, you can tell you don't have much familiarity with trees and tree anatomy. I really recommend you guys go get into, uh, you know, get, just Google twisty trees, sit there, zone out, watch a movie on the other screen or on your TV or something, get your sketchbook, and just copy it. Twisty, twisty there, twisty tree, <laughs> sorry. Um, and just copy it, copy the anatomy, memorize it, memorize how bark tears, memorize how it's really like veins. Once you get this pattern down, I notice that tree, vines, and veins, and lightning all look the same. Nature is just that random. Uh, it's just beautiful and consistent in its randomness. Even its randomness is, is, is measurable and calculable. It's beautiful like that. 
But you see this? This goes a long ass way. I see this kind of shit used to give character to, 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 to game environments, to all kinds of stuff. This, this is, this, people eat this up, writers eat this up, studios eat this stuff up, so if the more of this knowledge you get in your mind, literally just zone out and copy it down, your brain will do the rest. You just have to sit there and do it, you have to do the task. And if it's difficult, you get better at it, but that's the point of this challenge again, you're supposed to be doing something you've never tried before. Uh, you're supposed to be trying something that is a little bit more challenging. Uh, if you're if you're always drawing mechs or something always geometric, try something more organic. You'll find it's very difficult if you're always drawing organic and you get into mech, which is exactly what my problem is. Geometric comes very difficult for me, like drawing mechanical objects, because I don't understand their function. Right, so if I get into uh, experimenting or researching more about basic mechanics, which is what Robert, Scott Robertson always talks about in his tutorials. He's amazing, by the way. Um, he says, in order to draw better mechanics, you have to know the mechanics you're drawing. So you have to understand basic hydraulics. You have to understand basic pulleys and 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 uh, you know gasoline and different chambers and different areas of the of the movement of the the technology, so that you can draw it again and understand it. So function comes hand in hand with designing a concept that's believable. Can you know? Do you know how it functions? A tree really doesn't have all that kind of gear work inside of it or mechanics, so it, it's very easy to draw. You just have to understand how it randomizes. It's always trying to catch the light. The leaves are always trying to get as much light as possible, so they're going to go out there like and then spread around like little sinews trying to get as much light as possible to stay fed, so they're going to like like hands, like, like in a fingers reaching out to the, to the to the sun. So when you remember that narrative and attach it to the drawing process, your technique becomes more solid, force yourself to stay within one brush size, so, you know, it all comes together after a while. You just have to wait it out and try it every single day and it'll eventually the, the, the technique will kind of wrap together and the image will look better all around. Please don't underrate your rough work, your rough sketch. So write that back to me about function. Function, it goes hand in hand with a successful concept. All right, so understand the function of the object you're trying to draw. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, so beautiful work here. I like the consistency of the brush. Do you see how nice it looks? The more, the less lines you use and the, the more consistent the brush size through the whole piece, the better it looks. So I would have loved to see less of a mess around the, the spiral stairs, but honestly the perspective that you chose for these spiral stairs is just beautiful. Really, really good job. I'm so happy you guys tried this. This one is a little bit more messy, but this one I kind of like because it's got all this character. But you see the biggest issue though? is that this brush size, and this brush size, and this brush size, and this brush size, it seems like you use a different brush all, all the time, and then the trees are a different brush size. So decrease the opacity all the way down, uh, and then get another brush size that is consistent and try it again. I know it seems like a big job, but this cleaned up on your portfolio will sing songs for you, I promise you. This kind of stuff fills your portfolio up with content. All of the pieces in this challenge are portfolio pieces. They're pieces that will get you hired, uh, that will get you noticed. Okay, I really like this one here. It's very cartoony and cute. But I don't feel witch out of it, and I don't feel like it's broken down or run down. This one right here is very adorable. Uh, it's like it's a kid hiding in his mother's skirts. I think that's so adorable. Um, I would love to see a little bit more asymmetry in the structure. Maybe the tree is twisting this way, so the house follows the tree and started twisting that way and started falling apart. Uh, this one here is very cute as well. Maybe if the trees were twisting and then it could have a curve to it. Or this one can feel a little bit crushed, crushed down and maybe they, they kind of turn the floor into a deeper basement or something like that. Like I said, function is really important. If you think about the process they put into building it and whatnot, I love this. I love that it, you can feel like you get lost in the painting and kind of just disappear with it. This is very beautiful. I imagine some light coming through, casting long shadows of the trees on the floor and creating that beautiful um, at one point perspective kind of uh, fade for the for the cast shadows and just lots of little little um, what are those little thingies that float in the forest like, like pollen or something beautiful job extreme perspective big no-no um, you're using messy messy lines to create the feeling of texture I know this is one of the thumbnails but pretty much if, if it's a thumbnail don't bother trying to create the detail I like how you use the spiral to make it feel like the tree was growing upward good job with that 
but uh, stay away from this for your final draft. This is rendered. This was the opposite of what you were supposed to do. Okay, this right here, this is good for a draft, and this is good for a sketch, um, but when we, this feels like it's floating, by the way. It doesn't feel like it's on the ground. Is this floating? Is it supposed to be floating? Is it supposed to be in the distance? An object in the distance gets smaller. This size should be interchange, interchanged with this size. But anyway, um, I like the cold, and I, I tried that as well. But um, this mess here, this mess that I'm talking about, uh, try to avoid that when you're trying to render or creating concept art. It's not going to help you. It's not going to help a modeler. It's not going to help you when you have to redo the draft and clean it up and make some changes that an art director gives you. Um, okay, I'm denied. <clears throat> this one is very nice. You tried rendering it. The point is, we're sketching. So you see what you did here? You see this texture? This is a dependency. This is a crutch. This texture here shows the weakness. I want to see that you're improving the general anatomy and your awareness of surface anatomy of textures. So this texture here, this lack of texture that you've used a stippling brush for for some reason, you're never going to pull it off. It's never, you're never going to pull it off, not in the sketch mode, not in a render mode, not in a reference mode, uh, never, never. You're never going to find a tree that gets stippled like this unless it's moss. And why would we put this much concentration and detail and sharpness for moss? I mean, this, is, this deserves more attention. Why is the moss so important? Unless it's some sort of you know, biological field study of moss, but that's not, that's not the point here. He used it again here. Trust me, these textures are crutches. I would have loved to see some shingles. I would have loved to see some more brickwork. Maybe some leaves, some pine trees. So just Google pine tree and just take a look. What, how do you pull this off with a couple of brush strokes, not brush strokes, a couple of pencil strokes? And very quickly, just Throw, make sure your brush follows the pattern, the upward pattern, make sure you get the curve, maybe throw down the stick, and in the rough stage throw down a couple of upward, uh, you know, wisps of, of pencil, and that way you know you have a gesture line to follow. And this leads me to my next point. You're supposed to be using gesture lines for trees. Please write that back to me. When you use gesture lines for trees, you, be, you can experiment with the twisty shape of the tree before you're expected to, te to, to detail it with smaller sinews of, of, uh, of branches and leaves and bark. All right, A tree comes full four, four types, leaves, branches, barks, and the actual bark, the trunk itself. Um, so with the trunk, please use a gesture line for the trunk. It's going to make drawing a tree much more successful. All right, so this right here, if I were to draw this, I would just throw one straight line, which is the gesture line for the size of the tree and the, and the general shape of the tree. I, I know there's a symmetry expected of me, but it's not perfect symmetry, so it's going to be randomized. And then I'm going to use the little wisps and follow with some line art for the little leaves and shit like that. And I know it can be clustered, and that way I'll draw the full shape of the tree. It'll look organic. It'll look like a real tree and they'll actually have leaves on it instead of random little dots that are supposed to be an excuse for, for you know, for, for leaves or for, for whatever the, the surface growth is. I mean, I'm not sure if you can call it leaves for a pine tree. I think they're called um, needles. Anyway, beautiful job though. This does look a little bit, I don't know if the word is colonial. It just looks too structured and too put together. So after all of this, um, you still didn't really follow the description that well, and um, I feel like, yeah, she would own an elk or something like that, because how does she travel into town and buy supplies? Uh, I really like this one. Again, this is like the overgrown, um, grow, grew with the tree. I like that, but I still want it to look like it's run down, like an old, you know, she's, she's not really seen or welcomed by her community because she's a witch, so they're scared of her. There was also really good uh, hovel in uh, in uh, that one movie with Michael Fassbender. He's a Roman legionnaire who realizes there's corruption in Rome, and he visits a witch. What's it called? Um, whatever. But she, there's a witch in there, and she has a really nice old hovel. It looks like that, and it's all run down and broken down. So nice consistency, nice volume. What I'm looking for is brush size, consistent gesture lines. I'm not really finding many. It's very, very, uh, you know, but it's just straight lines. 
Uh, volume is good. The texture here is kind, you're kind of you know entering that. I'm going to just throw a bunch of messy lines here. Hopefully it reads. That's never going to read. It's never going to work. And a rundown, just a general rundown look. I like I like this one. I like how you threw the little um, like the little drawings on the on the tree. Definitely. I feel like if I can pick and choose from every one of your submissions and make a like a great ending, like combine it all to one big version that I use out of every single one of yours. I feel like we, we together would make the best witch's hovel that was ever designed ever. You know, like getting 94 of us are watching 94, 95 artists together to create one hovel. You know, that would be one amazing looking hovel. And this is definitely one of the things, one of the units I would use of design uh, on, the, on, on the final version that, that combines all of our pieces. There's these little drawings on the, on, the, uh, on the tree. I love that. I love that. Very, very nice work. I like the little mushrooms. They're just there, not trying to get much, so much attention. They're just there, nice and out of the way. I like the lamps. She's probably stick scared of the dark. That would be really funny if there was a witch scared of the dark. But yeah, when you're doing concept art and you're doing line art or you're doing something that you're going to be posting for promotional purposes for the project, if you're working on comic books, that's a big one. A lot of you want to do this in the future. A lot of you are learning how to draw because you want to draw and finish and publish a comic book, a story. So if your lines, are, if you're not getting used to this preparation process and storyboarding process where you have thumbnails, you have storyboards, you have messy lines, you have gesture lines, you have different, uh, you have put, you put research into what something, when something looks run down, you put research into what an organic object does, the patterns of its growth. If you, if you do all of that, your comic book reads better and you, you, you gain a better appreciation from your audience, a better, more respect from your audience as an artist and a storyteller. And this is what these challenges are made for to prepare you for all of that stuff that's expected of you. You're supposed to be a design a design beast. And you, when you design, you design with different schools of thought. So that's something else to write down. Schools Use different schools of thought to draw. Don't just use drawing and what's in your brain and think that referencing is a bad thing. Referencing is the only thing you have. Referencing is why you even have words and why you have symbols and why you can talk. Referencing is why, why anything makes sense. Uh, you have to use referencing and you have to use different schools of thought. So go into architect architecture, look up contracting jobs before and after, before houses were flipped. So the external, the exterior of houses before they were flipped into better looking houses, they probably look so shabby. Um, the, 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 I don't know, the, the, the brick outside must have been torn apart. Um, if there is some kind of uh, cement outside, it must have been chipped. Um, shingles are probably inconsistent. Probably there's really, really bad patchwork done on the, on the shingles outside. I'm sure they leak. One of the amazing, um, the most amazing uh, Disney ho hovels I've seen is the one from Sword in the Stone. Merlin House. Oh, I just, I just love what they did on the inside. He's just Merlin, you know, fucking Merlin, but he lives in this broken down little house and just a little bit of, you know, a little bit of stuff. They managed to pull off this, this this beautiful looking thing and they do it consistently breathing room and lines when you remove the colors guys when you get rid of the colors you get rid of the shading you're left with lines that's what I want your lines to look like because that's gonna give you power when you have these kinds of lines well this is an animation so they depend on lines to pull off the, the movement but um, but when you have lines you have something and I know I'm always saying stop using lines but that's only for rendering and technique you have to you have to you know, line is just a quick way to draw something and get, get its anatomy down, to, to jot down its anatomy. But all of these little pieces here, all of this anatomy in the room, all of this content was before, after, before the color, before the shades, before anything. It was just a drawing. And let me see if I can find a better picture of his, of his little house. I don't know if it's this. Maybe this is Madame Mim. Uh, I don't know. His house just looks so broken down, and there was always leaking. I think the leaking was in this tower, actually. But there were holes in his ceiling when he was expecting Arthur. It's just so charming, so pretty. I feel like you guys can really benefit from this kind of challenge if you constantly you know, take a look at references and how other amazing artists pulled it off. Consistent line, uh, consistent line weight. Actual leaves are visible. 
They do use some random textures here and there, but this is like a three second shot, so you don't really notice. But anything that is an extended shot, they, they obviously put more time into it. But I like the consistency of your brush, brush width. Please keep it consistent. Keep your brush width consistent. That's just me um, being more specific with that. Okay. I love this one. I really, really, really like this one. Uh, the, 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 the lines are just a little bit thick, but there's so much volume. Take a look at that. Empty, 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 empty. It's nice to have empty, uh, empty space inside of lines. It's nice to have that. Try to keep that. Sometimes just an empty, look how nice, it's so charming. I mean, I don't know what it is, but having this empty bit here, not filling it up with leaves, just completed the image for me. From the distance, it just reads so well. Take a look at that. When you add color, maybe later on you can um, uh, try to push the detail as much as possible. Here, this is nice, but um, I like how you kept these by you. But it'd be nice if you could try to fill it inside the, the square. Like I told you, it's really nice to have this kind of format. It's very cinema friendly. You'll know what to fill the canvas with. It's a challenge to fill that much width in a, in a, in a canvas. It's nice. But all of these just have one offer one awesome thing out of, out of the other. So this keep out is very nice. This reminds me of Shrek's house. Very, very similar to, to what's happening with um, with the witch's hovel. So cute, so charming, feels like it's lived in, but also really run down. You actually have organic gesture lines used for the trees. Well, this is, I think, after they had babies, but this right here. Trust me when I tell you these challenges are relevant in the industry. You, you, you're going to run across a broken down house. You're going to have to draw for somebody one day or for your own work. These are really nice concept wise, but the brush inconsistency between each frame is a little unsettling. Like this one here feels like this was the first one you did and it started to get like a little bit more focus in your brush line. You kind of appreciated a more consistent brush width. When you have to make the feeling that something is made of straw or wood, don't draw every plank. You don't have to draw every part of the object's anatomy in order to make it or in order to pull off the anatomy. Use suggestive texture but not but not going in there and drawing every little piece of the wood. So when let's say you're making a wooden box and this is a really really good study by the way, a good study method. Make a box and pretend it's some sort of texture you need and then reshape that box into that texture study. So let's say this is all that has planks in it. If I were to make this you know covered in planks I wouldn't just draw the planks everywhere. I draw them only in select areas. Now it's looking like brick, but then if I add the wood, it'll look like it's it's made of wood. So it'll look like a wooden box without me having to draw every part, every plank, every little piece of the wood. Okay, so that's 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 something I really want you guys to take from this challenge. Use suggestive detail. Don't don't try to what's the term for it? Like a really good term for doing this to something, you know, blah, 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 blah. like I don't know what to call it. Um, don't use messy texture to give something texture. I don't, I don't know. Just don't do this. This is just a big no-no. Try this. Try to have volume. This empty space, it's not a sign of your weakness as an artist. It's a sign of your maturity as an artist. Volume in a drawing is a sign of maturity in an artist, all right? Volume in a drawing inside some really nice, clean, consi consistent width. You know, this tapered off, right? But that's okay. That's okay if it tapers off. It's not like the whole brush was a different size. But yeah, volume in a drawing is a sign of consistent width. All right? I mean, <laughs> consistent... <laughs> Volume in a drawing... I was thinking of something else. Vo volume in a drawing is the sign of a mature artist. All right, so write that back to me. Uh, what am I doing? Okay, let's go up. I like this one very, very much, but the symmetry is a little bit unsettling as well. Maybe it's not that symmetrical, and she feels a little bit evil. But it just could be her, her, you know, familiar or something like that. She just feels like she's evil. So if I wanted to describe something evil, I would have said, you know, she lives in the darkest part of the forest. She has, uh, 
you know, people avoid it because they heard of people disappearing in there. Um, this could just be the, the perfect, it would be perfect for you know, a deliberately evil dwelling of some really evil sorcerer or witch. But that's not entirely what I was describing in the pitch, right? Oops. So try to try to try another version, exactly the same style of architecture, just without all the evil units. And symbols like, you know, a, a skull is very, very evil. Um, but a tiny little skull, a charm, maybe the, the, the picture of a spider, it doesn't necessarily always uh, call to, to an evil, like a memory of something evil or, 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 or threatening or intimidating. But this is definitely intimidating. It feels like, um, what's the name of that? Devil, I don't know, that, that Satanist worship, it's called a Behelet? No, that's from, I don't know. Okay, this is really nice how half the house is in there. I think that's so cute how the door is in the tree. Some of you did some amazing stuff. Some of you thought of some really, really cool stuff, let me tell you. You guys are amazing. It's just the imagination, just seeing what a, what a, a little bit of restriction does for you guys. Like I said, it makes you guys blossom. Okay, so this one right here. This feels like it's something that might be a tattoo. It's definitely not something that you can edit once you pitch to someone and they don't like this. If you send it to a, a, a you know, a, a, the, the art director or the writer and you said, hey, this is my concept. You hired me, you gave me a load of money. Here's my, here's my concept. Uh, do you like it? No, I don't like it. Change this and change that and change that. But that's going to take me forever. Can't you just take this? Can't you just like this and just shut up? That's what it's going to be like if you guys work too hard, add this much detail, this kind of cluster detail for the tree. It also doesn't feel like this tree is made of bark. It feels like it's made of vines in the shape of a tree. It doesn't feel like this is bark. It feels like wires put together to make the feeling of a tree. This is hard to edit. This is hard to use in a model. This is hard to read any kind of anatomy from. It doesn't speak any kind of volume. The negative space really is all I want to look at because I feel like my eyes are just being overloaded with information. It's too symmetrical. It's not charming. Feels evil. And where is her dwelling? Why is there two? Why are there twin dwellings? Is it supposed to be like a, you know, it's just too symmetrical. It doesn't feel like it's connected to the story at all. And you have this one, which feels a little closer. But again, just information overload. I like this. This is very cool. I like these rocks. Look at how charming having a little bit of breathing room is for your concept. Look at how charming. But you didn't have to draw every single little flower petal. Again, just draw a cluster of flowers. So how could you have pulled that off? You could have done a little something like this. So drawing a little bit here. Whoops. and then draw a couple of flowers and then draw a couple more maybe a couple of leaves and then a little bit of an indication as where as to where this flower this flower bed ends like where it ends that is enough for me if you have to you know you know really stress the fact that there are some really pretty flowers here for some somewhere in the foreground then throw a little bit of extra information just so that we see it's a flower, but that's all you need. Maybe have a little bit more clustered together. You don't need to show every single little bit of the flower. You also need to, don't need to draw every single little leaf. So just drawing some of the anatomy and not all. Selective, be selective with your detail. Write that back. Damn it, I keep opening this. No. Okay. So this is information overload. This is not going to get you hired. It's going to get you, you know, really infor like really sad with the way people might react to your work if you have to change it. It's going to be difficult to change that. You're going to be working for another eight hours trying to change that work. You can just quickly fix it if you have nice breathing room. This is actually really cute. Um, I don't have any problem with this one at all. It's a good rough under under layer. It's good for a rough. It's good for a storyboard. It's definitely not final quality, so I'm not going to treat it like that. You've got like little lamps that are made of skulls, but I don't feel like they're intimidating me at all. I feel like they're just scaring away the passerby. If the protagonist asks her, what's all those skulls about? Do they have magic in them? She'll be like, nah, they're just skulls, whatever. 
Um, I just use them to scare people away. The real magic is in the tree, you know, whatever. Like, it's just some sort of, you know, other story going on. I like the breathing room. I like how you didn't overdo the texture. Maybe I would love to see some windows, some basic architecture. I know it can be intimidating to draw a window or draw, uh, you know, a flight of stairs or, or draw a, um, a roof. You know, just anything that is geometric is so difficult for us because we're always, we, I think a lot of us enter art nature through nature. Um, and when we start entering art through geometry, some artists are fortunate enough to enter it through geometry, but most of us enter it through nature. That's why it's difficult for us to, to you know, it's harder for us to ease into anything geometric. But look up a window, you know, broken down window, broken window, or, 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 or old window. Image. Something like this. You know, this is not difficult at all. You just have a couple of perspective, you know, under undersides of a cube. But that's it. That's all really the only challenge of a window is making sure it looks three-dimensional. But I would love to see some windows here. I like this one. Maybe show some where, how this root went up under the water and went back down. Like over the water and went back down. Um, but your brush is pretty consistent throughout. Uh, pretty consistent. I like how you didn't draw every single little plank. I love that. And um, you have some nice architectural anatomy here, so you weren't that scared. Uh, I hope you've completed this one. <clears throat> okay, this one has a nice consistent texture. It's traditional, I think. I like how it feels run down and broken down and how the roof is like almost level with the, with the, with the hill and the hill is kind of in the way. I like how you drew the bricks. I love how you did this. I didn't even think of that. I always think of like a grounded cauldron instead of a raised cauldron. I like this charm. I'm not sure what it is. Oh, it's a bear paw. Ooh. I like how the detail in the distance is suggestive. I like I like how this just descends into the horizon line. So this is a horizon line and the hill is in the way of the rest of the trees. They're getting smaller in the distance. You guys remember those rules of depth that I showed you when you want to show an object is getting smaller in the distance, you shrink it, you make it less visible, you decrease detail, add atmospheric fade, add blur, all of these different things help you make something feel like it's in the distance. I like how the forward ones are really large but not in the way. Maybe just a little bit too much detail here. Erase some of these lines. So you can have a, a you know a more breathe more breathing room. It's in the foreground. It's supposed to be dark. When you paint this, you should not be telling yourself to detail this much. Your painting you, the version of you that's painting in the future, is going to overdo it with this tree. Um, this tree is supposed to be dark and really really plain to the eye. This is where all the detail goes. This is a cinematic darkening of the foreground, even blurring of the foreground. Nothing should contest with this detail concentration. Decrease, erase some of these if you can, or if you want to review it. Um, extreme perspectives, big no-no for concept art, big no-no. Unless it's a storyboard, you can of course use full perspective uh, spectrum for your for your storyboards. You can do all kinds of stuff if you're trying to tell a mo just speak a movie or something like that. But uh, this is cute. <laughs> the color is adorable. Um, I like how she hangs her clothes and how that's the line that she uses to, to pull the string back towards her. Kind of reminds me of Howl's. Um, it's leaning a little bit. I like how it's in the lake. How does she get to it? Through a boat? Where is the landing strip where she walks up? Try to think of that stuff. How is she going to get up into the house? I want it to look a little bit more broken down. Maybe she's a water witch. That would be really, really cool. But also, there was a big aspect of the design that had to do with trees. There are almost no trees in here, so you could have made this a swamp instead of a mountainous lake. It feels like a lake because of the mountains, right? Lakes are big bodies of water born between massive tectonic shifts in the, in, or shakes or whatever in the, in the past. So usually mountains are also a cause of, of two plates sliding on top of each other or something like that. So it feels more like a lake environment than a swamp. But trees will make it look like it's a swamp or just a tree filled lake you know if you want to stick to the lake feeling but get rid of the color you really don't need to think about that right now get rid of the fog we're trying to use pencil to push our anatomy to push the content this is very messy and it's gonna be hard for you to take this somewhere this is the first 15 seconds of the process and when you have 
four versions of 15 second sketches, and I know these didn't take you 15 seconds, I know that, um, but th for me these are 15 seconds, 10 seconds of random lines I'm throwing down. After this, lower the opacity and throw some more information in. Y your brush size is pretty consistent, I guess, but it kind of goes up and down. You did use some of those really, really squiggly, messy lines, and there's a lot of chicken scratch. This challenge was supposed to get you in the practice of keeping your lines as minimal as possible, using as little lines as possible. This means that there's a line efficiency that you're thinking about. What does line efficiency mean? It means that instead of doing instead of doing all that crazy flower bush stuff, you're using very, very little lines, but also it means that we're not doing that. Imagine there's a counter on the side at the top of your at the top of your screen. There's a counter. Once you hit 1,000 lines, you're not allowed to draw for a week. Okay? Imagine that. You want to use as little lines as possible so you can draw for as long as possible. If you're doing this, oh no, no, I'm just drawing a face. Then I'm gonna draw a face. I'm gonna draw a nose. You've already done so many lines for just a fucking head. You've you've just overdone it. I don't know why he's wearing a sombrero or those Puerto Rican hats. <laughs> Maybe he's a farmer. Um, but yeah, this is not good. This is not line efficiency. Line efficiency means use as little lines as possible to project the most content as possible. Write that back to me. So higher line efficiency means a better looking image. Line efficiency also relates to shrinking your brush and making sure that it's a nice consistent size through your lines. Every line in your image will always be sourced from the same brush size forever. Never change your brush size or brush type through the painting process and use as little lines as possible to express the most accuracy as possible, to have the most accuracy <clears throat> and the most uh, anatomy. Some of you think that using only one line will make it more difficult for you to get the exact shape of the line you want. No, if it's going to be, if it's hard for you to do this and then align it and then continue it, start practicing. Because if it's hard for you to keep a line perfectly consistent and pull off as much of the form as possible with just a line, um, it was just a straight line or a continuous line without lifting it up, you need to start practicing that. You can't use, you can't fail at one side and then depend on something else and expect that's another way out. That's like a, you know, a bailout. You can't bail out of your lack of line efficiency with chicken scratch. Write that back to me. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, so in order for this challenge to be like, you know, for the note challenge, taking notes, don't post them here. If you took notes, if you wrote them somewhere, in like a document or something, if you haven't start now, I want you to post these notes in the community as one as, as, as a post. So if you did take notes, post them on the community. I'm going to choose one of you as the best note taker and give you the brushes there. Probably give you something else as well. So I'm not really rewarding you guys for drawing the best drawing. It's really the best note taker that I give that, that I give rewards for. It's always been like that with my teaching. Okay, so some more symmetry. I think you're the same person that drew the, the, the big uh, behemoth. Not behemoth. God, what is it called? Oh yeah, the him. What is he called? Can someone tell me what he's called? The demonic uh, Baphomet. 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 Right. Curse that name. Um, okay, so take a look at this. How nice would these trees have looked? Come on. Let's mourn together for a little bit. Let's just have a moment of silence for these poor tree bunches here that had to just be just just defaced with these scratches. Why? You drew such amazing tree shapes. Look at that, buddy. You chose some of them to have the same... I love how parallel these are. It's just randomly parallel. I like that. I like how some of these are crisscrossing back and forth, just crisscrossing. Why did you feel like you had to go in there and destroy all that with this? You're not expected to fill a painting up. You're, you're allowed to have breathing room. You're allowed to have volume. This feels like it's a city, like skyscrapers. So rethink that. Maybe you are going for something that is a bit more modern, which is fine, um, which I think is cool, actually. Uh, that she's a, a, you know, living in a modern world, but she still lives in the, in the old ways. I love the broken down fence. Just look at that. Why did you have to confuse me and have me looking over here? 
This is a car crash. But look at this. My eyes should be here. My eyes should be here. Why? Let's just mourn. Just a moment of silence. I'm just going to just stop talking for 10 seconds. This beautiful painting. Let's shut up. <laughs> it's just a nice painting. And you just had to fill it up with... This is such a nice area. I just want to cry. You just could have just erased all this, 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 this stuff. And they just kept the volume of the trees. Get rid of that. You only need eyes here. You didn't need this. I don't know who pressured you into thinking you gotta do this, but but I'm mad at them. I'm not mad at you. All right. I really like this. I love the hail, like the hay past stacks on the side of the house. I'm not sure what this is. It looks like a rock, but it's such a structured rock. It almost seems like man-made. What would this rock be doing in the middle of a forest? It just makes me think like all of those questions. What's it doing there? So you have to find a way to explain what something is there for. If you can't explain it, just it's not worth it. Get rid of it. Just snicks it completely. This could have just been a tree, you know? What's wrong with it just being a tree? Why couldn't it just be one of these trees? I love how you lowered some of these into the distance so we saw the under parts of the tree. I love that. That's a really, really mature perspective. Um, I like her little uh, totem here. I do not like how excessively you added this detail on the bark. Again, breathing room is really, really important. Really, really important. You shaded? Bad. Bad. I really like this one. Get rid of the shades. We don't need them. And um, look up references so that you're not shading incorrectly. I like the breathing room in some of this, but compared to the detail cluster, the style of cluster here for the focal point is the same as everywhere else. This is confusing me from finding where the focal point is. When a viewer, write this back as I say it, when a viewer looks at a painting or a drawing, they are, their eyes wander around the drawing trying to find the focal point. The sooner they find the focal point, the more successful your concept was. Alright? So, when I'm sitting here trying to find it, if I didn't find it in a split second, you failed. Oh, I found it here. Excellent. I found it. I found it, but still, it took me a little bit longer than it took me for this one. Because just take a look. The same kind of detail cluster as I have here. It makes it hard to look at this painting. It makes me want to look away. Don't, don't, uh, you know, deny your, your viewer. So over here, again, another example of that. You guys really need to just settle down with your detail. Make sure that, look at these shingles, dude. Like, I love this. Leave it, leave it, leave this alone. But don't add these little bark. I mean, this bark is unnecessary. Breathing room, again. Um, look at that cool ass little thing you did here. She probably hangs a lot of stuff over here. Probably hangs her cauldron over here. No, the tree would burn down. Never mind. Um, she probably has a swing over here or something. I don't know. Um... Yeah, another example of a, of, a, of a witch's hovel in cinema is um, from Penny Dreadful. Penny Dreadful Witch House. Okay. Um, so this is that house of hers. This, this is always just run down. She had totems hanging off of it. She had a tree in the foreground. She had some... It was just like, you know, I, I'm telling you, this is going to be used forever. This style of house, this, this uh, hermit's home, is going to be used all the time. By the way, I totally recommend Penny Dreadful for anyone who's into that kind of fantasy, um, fantasy kind of kind of theme and witches and warlocks and stuff. Pretty much the best show for it. But please, please just remember, there is like a a pre there is like a great narrative in the world. A broken down house. There's only one version of it. There are minor changes here and there. But there's only one version of it. The castle. There's only one version of it. Take a look at how they uh, uh, film this castle, and then castle from Beauty and the Beast. Okay. So, where is that scene when it's ominous? Take a look at this. Same exact, just same exact thing, literally. It Again, tiny little changes here and there, but that leafless tree, leafless tree. Massive gate, massive gate. You know, it, it, it's, they're repetitive, and the more of these types of environments you become aware with, the more uh, 
you're going to be powerful as a designer. Someone's going to tell you, yo, I want a scary tree. You're going to give them a scary tree. This scary tree, uh, Pan's Labyrinth, I don't know how to spell that word, Labyrinth's tree, right? Images, just messed up old tree. Looks like the Baphomet. Remember that thing I just showed you guys with that one with that one drawing someone did? It looked too symmetrical. It's because it's intimidating. And this looks like a Baphomet, also like a uterus, which is really weird. Um, it was it was it was a point. Like they were trying to talk about, you know, how the little eggs are in there and shit. Anyways, um, Sleepy Hollow Tree. There's always the scary tree. There's always the scary house. There's always the scary castle. There's, you know, there's always the, um, the, 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 the mysterious traveler, the, the, the cloaked ranger. There's, it's, it's the, there's a great epic, and it's the same old rehashed characters and rehashed environments used over and over and over again. And as long as you know how to present compositionally, you know how to bring it together, it's already been made. The creativity happens with you. You are the unique variation of that consistency. Okay? I like the detail cluster here, but I don't like it everywhere else. You can get rid of these. I don't need to know. It's not important for me to know every tiny little groove of this whole rock, this whole rock trench. I don't need to know. I don't. I'm sorry. I'm the viewer. I don't have any business with this excessive detailing. All I need is a couple of lines to tell me, yeah, this is a valley, and make sure that they have that curve. So tell me that it's an empty place that was once, you know, a stream run through it, but it dried out. I do need to know that this house has shingles on it. I don't have to know that every single shingle is there. Maybe a, color, a couple of the shingles. I like how you have her clothes and her hood here. It's really cute. But it takes me a while to notice this. I want to notice this right away. How does she get up here, by the way, to get her clothes? This is a nice little warding here, like a nice totem to keep them away. I love how you have her little shoes here. But again, you're just over clustering this entire environment. The focal point just becomes drowned in lines. There's no breathing room. So we have some of that either not enough texture or too much texture. So this this exercise was really good for some of you. It was just what some of you needed. It was just it was wonderful to see how you guys took it on courageously. You changed your brush size. Um, you had a big black dot right here, another black dot right here. This is attracting too much attention. Detail, overload, breathing room, no volume. You know, all the major details and, and units of the description are now hidden. The house doesn't feel run down. I said hovel, you know, I gave you the description of hovel. If I'm the art director, I just fire you and hire someone who knows, you know, how to follow that. I'm sorry, that's really mean of me to say, but they are that mean, and they are that much of an asshole. Before even taking a second look and maybe considering, hey, this guy's got spirit, they won't even look at your portfolio and think, oh yeah, maybe I'll hire him for his spirit. Some of you expect employers to hire you for your spirit. They don't give a shit about your spirit. They're assholes. They're after money. Some of them are just after money. They just want the project finished so that they can sell it. They want someone who has a read in their work right away. If you have to do this, in this way, if you have to get hired and you want to go that down that route and you want to be a freelance concept artist and you want to work con as a contractor and you want your portfolio to speak loudly and represent you well, follow these, these rules that I've been showing you today. Right? Make sure you follow descriptions and when you are given a description, you'll have more. When you combine writing with art, you get a better image. But if you're not a writer and you're just placing prop beside prop, you're going to, you know, you're going to get a boring look to the house, but when someone is telling you, hey, add in a broken down house, oh, that, that's nice, ooh, you know, character, ooh, asymmetry, ooh, like, you know, sh you know, broken shingles and, and little pieces on the ground, but this, this is overload, information overload, uh, but thank you for trying it nonetheless, I thank all of you for trying this challenge. It, it opened your eyes, I hope. It ho I hope it opened your eyes. And I hope that you guys are, 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 you're going to continue this kind of, this kind of practice. You're going to continue this kind of stuff. It's not just going to be about drawing portraits. Portraits are nice portraits. Everyone needs portraits in their portfolio. I'm sorry. You're going to have to learn how to draw a face if you want to get hired as an, as, as a, as a, as a, as a all talent, uh, uh, 
totally useful artist in a, in a, in a studio or for your own personal work it doesn't matter but um, but yeah aside from portraits you're gonna have to learn how to draw a tree and you're gonna have to learn how to draw an environment and I want you guys to keep trying this stuff I think the most successful one in this entire in the entire submissions I saw um, or like the, the two most successful this one so you can see the further in the distance they got the less they added that cluster the only place we really other than this right here which is really just dragging my eye away I feel like you should have emptied out this tree but but my eyes are just staying here even the trees beside the house have a little bit more cluster to them than the rest you do try to draw every single piece though there is a bit of an overload there's not much volume but I feel like you make up for it by keeping the water here a little less but again drawing every single ripple is it really necessary is it my business as the viewer to have to see that I like this weird little totem you have maybe it just it's some way to get her the flies and the mosquitoes away from her because I'm sure there's a buttload of mosquitoes over here this just this whole structure everything you thought about it does look like a rundown old place um, I think it's adorable I think this is really 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 good find like a piece for your portfolio please do try to make these corrections happen I have one issue with this painting is that the focal point is pushed into the top right corner can anyone answer why that's problematic can anyone tell me why that might be an issue <clears throat> so, I mean, my mother's lawyer friend is the nicest woman I've ever met. Um, <laughs> cloaked ranger gives her a boost. <laughs> oh, you know me so well. Tree uterus equals life? Yeah, exactly. All right, so who can answer why it's problematic to throw this at the top right corner? To throw the, uh, how old am I? Why is that necessary? <laughs> Why do you have to know how old I am? Yeah, I'm 44. Yep. I'm 44. <laughs> it's not comfortable for the eye. Focal point. Well, yeah, but why? I know it's the focal point. I know that. I know it's not comfortable for the eye. Why? I'm asking for the real, f like, like, the real sciences behind why it's not. It doesn't follow the rule of thirds or the golden ratio. It's not just a good place for a focal point. It's just not a good place for a focal point. Good answer. Because the golden ratio would not be happy with you. Excellent. Outside of golden ratio. Uh, read left to right. Is it because it pushes your focus off the canvas? Yes, Tanya. Yes. Focal point, golden ratio, yes, that's the right answer. But you guys, if someone doesn't know what focal point, I mean, what golden ratio or rule of thirds means, they won't really know what you're talking about. But that's what Tanya just answered. It is because it pushes your focus off the canvas. It invites you to just run away. I'm looking, I'm looking. Oh, yeah, we've entered the nice little hovel. I need to meet this lady to help me with my quest. And then I need to say, oh, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and just leave. <laughs> that's what it feels like. Um, you want to make him spiral back the route of, to her house. Have a nice little curve. Gesture lines in a canvas are a good thing. Please write that down. But yes, spiral back the road and then have the tree just sit right there. My eyes, you want to know where my eyes go after this? They go here and then they just look away and press next. You want your viewer to do that? You want the guy who paid you $3,000 for a three-month contract? I mean, that's really shitty, but three-month contract to just draw four, you know, really, really good. And four is really good. I mean, maybe not ten. Ten. Ten, ten sketches, $3,000 for a high-end movie, whatever. Or maybe you're part of a studio. I have no idea. I'm not going to talk logistics. But, um, you know, you're going to want to give him something where the, where the viewer doesn't look away. I feel like this is in the panning process before the camera stops. Think camera when you think composition, when you think golden ratio. The golden ratio, let me just draw the spiral, is telling me, yep, the house should be right here. Smack dab, smack dab in the middle is just nasty. It's just too, it's like, it's like royal, holy symmetry. Symmetry is just, uh, can be very, very ugly, all right? But yeah, the house should have been right here. I have this rock here where the house should be. I'm not happy with this. I'm going to fire you. <laughs> okay, so try to hide some of this, this root. Make the root nice, nice little C shape. 
walking in here. I need her to help me with my quest. La 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 la. Hello, knock knock knock. And then the con the story continues and the movie continues. Okay, that's why storytelling is a part of this. We, we we don't want our eyes to just hover here in the corner, and then run away. This one is nice. Brush is too thick, um, but it's one of the most successful ones I think. Um, Concept-wise, technique-wise, you have a lot of issues, but concept-wise, even form-wise, just take a look at these tree tree growths. I don't know what they're called, um, and and you know you over-detailed the, the the waterfall, by the way. But uh, the concept is great. It's in the middle of the forest. Um, it's a functioning home. She's lived there. It doesn't feel evil. I am missing the totems, though. It feels like just a, a small family lives here. But the crow is kind of just letting me know it's an evil house. Not evil, but witch house. Um, but I do wish that you could uh, make it. It does look run down, definitely. Um, and I like how it's in the snow. I think that's snow. But, uh, but just some more charms here and there. Some more totems. The door would be nice. And, uh, and the function. Again, function. Would I really live here if there was no door? If I found this place in the middle of nowhere and I wanted to dwell in it because I was outcast by my town because I was a witch, I would probably just find a way to build a door. Um, a door is really important. Function, remember. But the breathing room, when I zoom out, I love this empty space you have here. Shrink your brush, retry this, lower the opacity, get rid of that detail cluster, cluster in here. Uh, stay closer to the concept as described by your art director and, um, and, and you'll be all the better for it. Oh, this is nice. I like this. This is very, very nice. Careful with silhouettes in a sketch. They attract too much attention unless you want them to be the focal point. But detail cluster, detail cluster. Concept is cool, but these rocks are so clustered. This is just one big mess. Leave the insides of the bark. Try to leave them empty. If you have to have detail, allow just minimal detail. Don't overdo it. This is nice. It's not an extreme perspective. Like I said, you can have a minimal worm's eye. And uh, let's see the two new pieces. So again, this is another example of doing too much work for a sketch. This is nice. I like how it's under the hill. That's really cute. The totems got going on. But this bridge isn't that important. Trust me when I tell you this bridge isn't that important and the trees aren't that important for you to detail them. It's almost unsettling for them to be that detailed. Great job. Great job. Breathing room. You see this? This, this, uh, this like tape, cassette tape texture? Get rid of it. No. The only thing that should be this close and this compact to each other is the bricks and the wood. This is not necessary. Unless she's got like a bunch of leftover and she likes to collect cassette tape ribbon <laughs> and you want to show that she collects cassette tape ribbon, um, get rid of it. All right. This, look at this. Let this mushroom speak. Let this totem speak. This is just attracting my eyes. I feel like I'm just going to, you know, disappear in this and enter fourth dimension or something. You need to get rid of these excessive details. Look at that. That's cute. Look how you did these little leaves. Again, try to be more suggestive instead of drawing every single one. But again, if they're this close to the focal point, you kind of you kind of get away with it. But this, no breathing room here. I would love to see some more rocks on the surface to make you feel more flat. Some of you are missing a horizon line entirely. Write that down. Don't forget the horizon line. Those, those are that's landscapes 101. Landscape basics 101. This is really nice. Breathing room, breathing room. These trees are too symmetrical. They're making my eye leave the canvas. You want to maybe just make them cross a little bit. Um, and this this extra detail here, just try to get rid of it. The, the, my eyes are going up here, and then they're going here, and then, oop, I just left the canvas. I'm going to press X. Yeah? So that's what you don't want the viewer to do. Have a thicker tree. What's she on? Maybe a, a thick tree grew here and a couple of small ones in the back. They don't have to be all the same size. If it's, if it's deliberately all the same size, then the, the tree circle nightmare. Okay, images. Just that, that tree circle area, nightmare before Christmas. Seems so deliberate. Like someone actually, you know, planted these trees here. <clears throat> 
So when they're all the same size, it's going to attract attention. It's going to create repetition, size repetition, scale repetition, and a, and a composition leads the, leads the eyes to makes a focal point. Okay. So I like how you had this messiness. You chose the one that you really liked. I think you chose well as well. I really, really like these stairs. Um, they look nice and broken down. She's got her little chimney. It's not the best looking house, but she loves it. She's got her totems. I love how they're in the wind. Um, the canvas, though, I feel like you should stretch it out anyway. This is a vertical canvas. If this wasn't a movie, the camera would have to just still pan up and in a 16 by 9 ratio lens, right? So we, we would still need a, a long canvas. And if I was a concept artist and I'm trying to create the environment entirely, I want a horizontal depiction of the environment because my eyes are beside each other. They're not on top of each other. When my eyes are beside each other, it's easier for me to just rotate my head and see more information. So that's the point here is that we're rotating our head side to side, like shaking or sh nodding our head, no, shaking our head from side to side, panning our head from side to side. So try to include some more info. Just stretch the canvas all the way. I mean, like 16 by 9 it, man. And just make the hill more visible. Add some minor detail here. Some trees disappearing into the horizon line. Identify the horizon line. And you'd be good. But it being this vertical, I feel like I'm claustrophobic. I feel like I've just, you know, I feel like I'm just going to get stuck in the painting. I want to, I wanna, you know, I want to be able to walk in it. Invite your viewer in a more believable environment, a more believable framing. So this framing is not cinematic. Cinematize it. These these submissions were just amazing. I'm really proud of some of you. So I, I know I didn't paint over them because I, I don't really know how I could paint over. I don't know how I could turn these into a paint over because I, all I can do is point to what the issue is. These are all amazing concepts. A lot of you have so much potential. All of you have so much potential. Um, and, and if you follow these rules of compos composition, you follow these technique rules, composition rules are so important to making uh, a more clean represent a presentation. Technique also cleans up the presentation. Function, concept are hand in hand. Make everything feel like it's real, lived in, believable. Organic shapes need lots and lots of referencing and they need to feel organic. Even their gesture has to be the opposite of geometry. I love how a lot of you really showed uh, cube versus organic geometry juxtaposed beside organic. I love that. This is a real like, this concept really did invite that kind of um, a contrasting elements together. And uh, for the next challenges, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be the reason. There's a reason why I've been sketching like crazy, and it's because I've been giving you challenges without giving you guidelines. So. The next challenge is going to be another drawing challenge, but you're going to be drawing a group of, it's going to be called, what did I call it earlier, um, the Adventure Fellowship, okay? It sounds really cheesy, but again, it's very, very good for today's industry to get this kind of stuff in your portfolio. It's really, really good for you. You're going to love it, um, and your viewers are going to love it. You're going to have to design a group of five people five characters. They all have different roles. I'll be uploading the brief when it's time to do these uh, to these challenges. But you know, you're going to have the basic roles, healer, mage, bruiser, ranger, um, uh, magician, whatever, shaman. Um, and uh, I'm going to describe each of them for you. I'm going to give you a description for them. And I expect the same clean lines, the same line efficiency, the same line width. Basically, it's so that you're an artist that ends up not depending on photographs to render your concepts. You're an artist that knows how to fill a canvas up. You know how to, you know what you want in the character's costume. The content and the anatomy of the character, they're all, they're something that you know, you know what you want on the character. So you don't have to get a, a photograph of chainmail to, to, to be able to draw the chainmail or render the chainmail. You'll know how to go about rendering the chainmail just by step one, which is just learn how to draw it first. You'll you'll add you'll have more of a of a of a variety in your in your you know costume visual library. So this is going to be a real big one, and I I did want to take these witches hovel sketches and and have you guys render them, 
but um, but I don't think rendering right now is very good for you guys. I think we should stick to this um, stick to this sketching thing that we're doing, which is it's, it's really good for your improvement. It's really good. What if you sketch with shapes? Of course you can sketch with shapes. Under all of my sketches there were shapes. Under every single one of these there is a shape. There's a weird ass little shapes, cubes and circles and you know, of course you can sketch with shapes. That's how you should sketch. You start off with cubes and circles and pyramids and then you dress it up into something that is more functional and believable. Um, so, uh, so, so I, I hope this next challenge is, is opens your eyes just like this one. Please continue. If you had corrections today for your submission, please correct your witch's hovel concept. This is stuff that you will dress up your portfolio. I've been talking forever. I'm so sorry. But, um, but do you guys have any questions for me? I just can't do line art digitally. It makes me so frustrated. I think if you keep applying, it's just a mileage thing. I think you'll get used to it. And remember, it's not called line art. It's not, when I say line art, line art a lot of you just think manga. Manga is, is line art, but even manga has that consistent line width, um, negative versus positive space, detail cluster, even manga uses that. But this is not, this is just sketching. You still have to sketch these and make them into a splash so Riot can use them. So, um, don't invest so much stock into how clean or perfect your line is and how inked it looks. There's a, I'm using a sketchy brush, the messiest brush in the, in the, in the trade. Um, so yeah, please, um, please continue. Don't give up. <clears throat> please go to the community to submit your notes. Whoever made notes for today's class, you will be rewarded according to how well your notes were made. I'm going to choose one, one person. Why were they... Oh, okay, okay. Um, wait, wait, wait. Only post one. Only post one. Sorry, delete your, your note and post only one. One draft of notes. Okay? And I will choose a winner and I will give you a bunch of stuff. I have to do homework, but I can't. I always get so inspired to draw from these. <clears throat> I'm, losing, I'm losing my voice. Uh, with line art for me, it brings more evident symbols. How to keep them on track. Um, Felipe. A symbol, really, the biggest danger, what I always say is lines or symbols, or stay away from lines. I mean, when you're painting a tree, Felipe, just don't do this. Alright? Don't do that when you're pa trying to paint a tree. Do, you know, do this first, and then do this. And then do a couple of other gesture lines, and then do this. So we're thinking volume. These spirals are introducing the z-axis. And then lower that opacity all the way down, and then get into that. So you're so you're learning how you know one part of the tree stacks in front of the other. All right, and then some of this branch you know is going to be in the way of other branches. Some of the leaves are going to be in the way here, and then some of these roots are a little bit more. So this is drawing against symbols. You're not drawing with symbols anymore because you have a blueprint, and the blueprint that has the z-axis considered. All right because you can either use a cube, honestly, you can just go ahead and use a cube if you want to. It is a cylinder, so you're not supposed to. A cylinder is the spiral. But as long as you're not doing this, when I say cat, as long as you're not drawing, you know, like that, for a cat. Or, you know, like, as long as you're not doing that, but you're kind of just trying to draw a gesture for the cat, and trying to have anatomy to it, and trying to draw the bones, and and stuff and then the cat is slowly like coming down the tree and it feels real and the, the you know like that's what I mean sketch it have some blueprints and the blueprints have to have anatomy that is geometric and believable and three-dimensional that's how you stay away from the symbol Felipe does it matter which program you use or can you use something other than Photoshop of course you can use something other than Photoshop the only reason why you should start using Photoshop is because it's an industry st industry standard and there's just so much more tutorials out there for Photoshop than there is for everything else. So you might as well just, you know, give yourself that luxury. I'm queen of note taking. If you want, you don't have to post it as a picture. Just post it as a, yeah, if you guys did take notes, but just post it as a, um, you know, like a submission, like a, a just a post. Wow, spiral is useful. Yes, it is, Calvin. 
Some of you are really new in your journey. Some of you are very, very well, like well into your journey. And all of these, no matter which stage you're in, all of these tips I gave you guys today will help all of you. Um, they even help me. Like I use, I'm the one teaching you, but you think I'm just a, a, some sort of end game. I'm not. I'm, I'm a student just like the rest of you. I'm an, a, an upward climb just like the rest of you. And I know that these tips help you climb better. So that's it for today. I'm going to be looking for your, for your uh, submissions, and I don't know how I'm going to contact you guys, but uh, I, will, I will message you guys and have you message me on Facebook, and I'll give you the, 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 the rewards there. All right? So hopefully this is an incentive for you guys to participate so I can give you guys stuff. <laughs> um, the rewards would probably get bigger and bigger each time, eh? <clears throat> So thank you everyone for coming today. You guys are great. You guys are awesome. I'm, I'm so happy you guys tried this. I'll see you guys on Thursday for some, you know, regular, regular uh, critique hour. Thank you everyone for coming. If you guys want to know a little bit more about what I do, just go to istabrak.com. All the links are there. If you missed the link for the community, it's right here, Google+. Plus. Fo um, YouTube, if you guys want to subscribe and like and whatnot, please join on YouTube. I will submit today's class on YouTube. Facebook um, is where you can pretty much get files back from me if I painted over anything or, or, uh, or send files to me. Twitter is where I announce everything and uh, Instagram. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Thank you everyone for watching. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.